Welcome to the Celtic Myth Pod Show, bringing the tales and stories of the ancient Celts to your fireside. Episode 6 What Price Treachery? Hello, welcome to the Celtic Myth Pod Show. I'm Gary. And I'm Ruth. Let's get straight down to business and tell you how you can contact us. You can email us by sending an email to Gary or Ruth at CelticMythPodShow.com or you can record some voice feedback for us by using the Avoca recorder on our website. You can also come and talk to us in our forums which are beginning to hum now with some interesting discussions and some fun games. We really would love to hear your opinions about how we're doing and what you think about the stories. So give us some of that feedback. It would also really help to get our show noticed if you could leave us a review on iTunes as well. And now some news and views. Before the release of our next episode, we're going to be giving you a special present. Because it's Beltane, or May Day at the end of April. We'll be releasing a special show all about this festival which is one of the four most important times of the year for the ancient Celts. We'll have a different format to our normal episodes and include some music and a special surprise. We hope you enjoy this very special episode. Let's move on to a reminder about the story so far. In the last episode, the sons of Twiran kill Kian, the father of Lu of the Long Hand, and hide his body in an unmarked grave. The Dagda, as the great god, meets the Morrigan, as the goddess of the land, and enters into a compact with her by taking part in a sacred marriage. He later gains a powerful ally by mating with the daughter of Indech, the Fomorian king. With the morning sun rising hot at his back, Lu Samuel Dornach, the master of all arts, rode at full speed up the lower grassy slopes of the hills. The mare's hooves thundered under him, a saddle cloth whipped with the speed of her run, and her breath came loud as she nosed forward to the oncoming hills. After parting with his father, Lou rode forward from Tavia westward, to the hills that were called afterwards Gerech and Ilgerech, and to the ford of the Shannon that is now called Athruin, and then to Berna nai Dargara, the gap of separation. He rode over Moiluirg, the plain of following, and to Korslev Narsesa, the round mountain of the poet's spring, and to the head of Shan Sleeve, and through the place of the bright-faced Koran, and from that to Moimor and Ine, the great plain of the fair, where the Fomor were, and the spoils of Canachta with them. It is then Brais, son of Elata, rose up, and said to his druids, It's a wonder to me the sun to be rising in the west today, and it's rising in the east every other day. It would be better for us if it were the sun. What else is it? It is the shining face of Lou. Son of Ethlin. Lou came up to them then and saluted them. Why do you come like a friend to us? There is good cause for that, for there is but one half of me other to our Hadetanan and the other half of yourselves. I ask you to give me back now the milch cows of the men of Erin. May early good luck not come to you till you get either a dry or a milch cow here. So Lou waited near them for three days and three nights, 
and at the end of that time the riders of the Shi came to him. Lu wondered then why his father Kian was not amongst them. Bov Dirk, son of the Dagda, came with twenty-nine hundred men, and he said, What is the cause of your delay in giving battle? Waiting for you I was. Then the kings and the chief men of the men of Erin took their armor upon them, and they raised the points of their spears over their heads, and they made close fences of their shields, and they attacked the enemies of Moimoranine, and their enemies answered them, and they threw their screaming spears at one another. And when their spears were broken, they drew their swords from their blue-bordered sheaths and began to strike at one another, and thickets of brown flames rose above them from the bitterness of their many-edged weapons. And in the thick of the battle, Lu saw where Brace, son of Alato, was, and he made a fierce attack on him and on the men that were guarding him, till he had made an end of two hundred of them. And when Brace saw that, he gave himself up to Lu's protection. Give me my life this time, and I'll bring the whole race of the Fomor to fight it out with you in a great battle. And I bind myself to that by the sun and the moon, and the sea and the land. I shall give you and your druids my protection. By my word, if the whole race of the Fomor went under my protection, they would not be destroyed by me. So then Brace and the druids set out for their own country. After the battle of Moimor on Ine, he met two of his kinsmen and asked them whether they had seen his father in the fight. We did not. I'm sure he is not living, and I give my word there will be no food or drink go into my mouth till I get knowledge by what death my father died. The fae heard his call and sent a breeze to him then. It touched his face and eyelids. It lifted the thick curls of his hair. It touched his hand as a hound touches the hand of a beloved master and Lu knew the wind had come for him. He followed it and the riders of the Shi after him, till he reached the place where Kian had been slain. And when Lu came to that place, the earth spoke to him and it said, It is in great danger your father was here, Lu, when he saw the sons of Twiran before him, and it is into the shape of a pig he had to go, but it is in his own shape they killed him. Then Lu told that to his people, and he found the spot where his father was buried, and he bade them dig there. That way he would know by what death the sons of Tuiran had made an end of him. O Lu, the bond of brotherhood is broken, as the sons of Tuiran have slain your father. Look at what a war to mourn for my father. My father's body rises from the earth. Oh, it is all but a bed of wounds. It was the death of an enemy the sons of Tuiran gave, my dear father. It's bad the way I am myself after this death. For, for I can hear nothing with my ears, I can see nothing with my eyes, and there's not a living pulse in my heart with grief for my father. And, and you gods I worship. It is a pity I am not to have come here the time this thing was done. It is a great wrong that it was done here for the people of the gods of Dan who to have done treachery on one another. Oh, and it is long they'll be under loss by it and be weakened by it. And Erin will never be free from trouble from this action, from east to west. Then they put Kian under the earth again, and after that there was keening made over his grave, and a stone was raised on it and his name was written in Orm. This hill will take its name from Kian, although he himself is stripped and broken. It was the sons of Tuiran did this thing, and there will be grief and anguish fall on them for it, and on their children after them. It is no lying story I am telling you. It is in pity the way I am. My heart is broken in my breast since Kian, the brave man, is not living. Then he bade his people to go before him to Tavir, but not to tell the story till he told it himself. When Lu came to Tavir, he sat in the high seat of the king, and he looked about him and he saw the three sons of Tuiran. 
Those three were beyond all others at Devere at that time, for quickness and skill, for a good hand in battle, for beauty and an honourable name. And yet there were those who wondered where the hero light had gone from the forehead of Lou. Shake the chain of silence. What are your minds fixed on at this time, men of Danu? On yourself. On yourself, indeed. I have a question to ask of you. What is the vengeance each one of you would take on a man that killed your father? Tell us, was it with your own father that was killed? It was indeed. And I see now, in this noble house, the men that killed him. And they know themselves what way they killed him better than I know it. It is not an immediate death I would give the man that had killed my father. If he was in my power, I would cut off one of his limbs each day till I'd made an end of him. We do agree, we with, do Nawada. agree with Nawada. There are making that answer the three men that killed my father. And let them pay the fine for him now, since you are all together in the one place. And if they will not, I will not break the protection of the king's house, but they must make no attempt to quit this house till they have settled with me. If it was I myself who killed your father, I would be well content of you to take a fine from me for him. Then the sons of Twiran gathered themselves into a corner, and with trepidation did Brion say, It is at us, Lou is saying all this. Let us acknowledge the killing of his father to him. I have entreated that it is once an acknowledgement from us ears, in the presence of all the rest, and that he would not let us off of a blood fine afterwards. It is best to acknowledge it, and let you speak it out since you are the eldest. It is at us you are speaking, Lou. We are thinking we went against the sons of Kante before now. We did not kill your father. We will pay the fine for him, though, the same as if we had killed him. I will take a fine from you that you do not think of, and I'll say here what it is. And if it's too much for you, I will let you off a share of it. Let us hear it from you. Here it is. Three apples, the skin of a pig and a spear, two horses and a chariot and seven pigs and a dog's whelp, and a cooking spit and three shouts on a hill. That is all the fine I'm asking. And if it's too much for you, a part of it will be taken off you presently. And if you do not think it too much, then pay it. It is not too much, or a hundred times of it would not be too much. And we think it likely, because of its smallness, that you have some treachery towards us behind it. I do not think it too little of a fine, and I give you the guarantee that to our day to Narn, I will ask no other thing. And I will be faithful to you, and let you give the same pledge to me. It is a petty you to ask that. Your own pledge is as good as any pledge in the world. Your own pledge is not enough, for it's often that the likes of you promise to pay a fine in this way, and then try to back out of it after. So then the sons of Twiran bound themselves by the King of Erin and by Bov Dirk, son of the Dagda, and by the chief men of the Tuahade Dinan, that they would pay that fine to Lou. It would be well for me now to give you better knowledge of the fine. It would be well indeed. This is the way of it, then. The three apples I asked of you are the three apples from the garden in the east of the world, and no other apples will do but these for they are the most beautiful and have the most virtue in them of all the apples of the whole world. This is what they are like. They are the color of burned gold, and they are the size of the head of a child a month old, and there is a taste of honey on them, and they do not leave the pain of wounds or the vexation of sickness on anyone that eats them, and they do not lessen by being eaten forever. And the skin I ask of you is the pig skin of Twis, king of Greece, and it heals all the wounds and all the sickness of the world. And whatever danger a man may be in, if it can but overtake the life in him, it will cure. And it is the way it was with that pig, 
Every stream of water it would go through would be turned into wine to the end of nine days after, and every wound it touched was healed. And it is what the druids of Greece said, that it is not in itself this virtue was, but in the skin. And they skinned it, and the skin has been there ever since. And I think, too, it will not be easy for you to get it, with or without leave. And do you know what is the spear I'm asking of you? We do not. It is a very deadly spear belonging to the king of Persia. The Luin it is called. And every choice thing is done by it. And its head is kept steeped in a vessel of water. The way it will not burn down the place where it is. And it will be hard to get it. And do you know what two horses and what chariot I'm asking of you? <laughs> they are the chariot and the two wonderful horses of Dobar, king of Shogir. And the sea is the same as land to them, and there are no faster horses than themselves, and there is no chariot equal to that one in shape and strength. And you know what are the seven pigs I asked of you? They're the pigs of Esau, king of the golden pillars, and though they are killed every night, they're found alive the next day, and there'll be no disease and no sickness on any person that will eat a share of them. And the whelp I asked of you is Phialinis, the whelp belonging to the king of Yorway, the cold country. And all the wild beasts of the world would fall down at the sight of her, and she is more beautiful than the sun in his fiery wheels, and it will be hard to get her. And the three shouts you are to give on a hill must be given on the hill of Mjochin in the north of Lochlan. And Mjochin and his sons are under bonds not to allow any shouts to be given on that hill. And it was with them my father got his learning. And if I would forgive you his death, they would not forgive you. And if you get through all your other voyages before you reach to them, it's my opinion they themselves will avenge themselves on you. And that is the fine I've asked of you. There was silence and darkness on the sons of Twiran when they heard that. And they went to where their father was and sat down in sorrow and heaviness, and there was no word between them till their sister Enya came to them. Why does sorrow darken your faces and the faces of your household? What grief has come upon you? We have slain Kian, son of Dian Kecht, the father of Lul and Bada. Alas, ye have broken Lu's protection out of Eren. He will not fight in the great battle now. Lu will fight in the great battle. He has laid on us a blood fine that bows us to the great monk. What blood fine? Then they told her that Lu sought the seven wonders of the world and more in fine for the death of his father. We are undone. Destruction has come upon us. Let us go before Thera and our father sees that good days are gone from us. Sorrow cannot be hidden. What sorrow? Help me to my seat, lad. Then Brian told the story of Kian's death and what fine Lou had bound on them. And when he made an end of telling it, Twiran said, Bitter indeed to me is the coming of the Deliverer, for he has taken from me my three sons, my three eagles that never failed to carry off a prey, my three salmon of knowledge that could make paths for themselves in all the rivers of the world. My three strong bulls that stamped on the necks of kings. Oh, it's a bitter thing to be old without my sons. Oh, my father, if you have bred strong sons, they will set forth strongly. And it may be they will bring back the blood coin spoil. Not make a lamentation for us till we are dead. Not, not so. You are setting forth on an adventure that knows no ending. For the treasures that ye seek are hidden in the caves of dragons and under sea waves. Strange kings will make a mock of you leaning over battlements of adamant, and strange monsters will crush your bones. You'll not come back to me, living or dead. No one will heap the grave mound over your bodies. Oh, but for all that, if Lou himself had a mind to help you, you could work out the fine. And all the men of the world could not do it without the power of Mananan or of Lu. Go then. I'll ask the loan of Mananan's horse, the Einvar, from Lu. And if he has any wish to get the fine, he will give it to you. But if he doesn't wish it, he'll say the horse is not his, and that he would not give the loan of a loan. 
So, uh, ask him then for the loan of Mananan's Kurach, Squabtine, the, the, the sweeper of the waves. And he will give that, for he's under bonds not to refuse a second request. And the Kurach is better for you than the horse. So the sons of Twiran went to where Lu was, and they saluted him, and they said they could not bring him the fine without his own help, and for that reason it would be well for them to get a loan of the Envar. I have that horse only on loan myself, and I will not give the loan of a loan. If that is so, give us the loan of Manana's Karach. That I will give. What place is it? Brunaboin. Then they went back again to where Twiran was, and his daughter Enya, their sister, with him, and they told him they'd got the Kurach. It's not much better you'll be for it, although Lou would like well to get every part of this fine, and so he can make use of them before the battle with the Fomor. But he would like yourselves to come to your death looking for them. Then they went away, and Enya went with them, but they left Twiran sorrowful and lamenting. In our next episode, the sons of Twiran try and fulfill the blood fine, and then realize exactly how clever Lou's revenge is. To our listeners in and from the Isle of Man, a happy St. Morgold's Day. I hope that's the right pronunciation. More can be found out about the patron saint of the Isle of Man on the latest news section of our website. Irish drinking songs, Scottish bagpipes, totally trad, jigs and reels, Celtic rock. If it's independent Celtic music, you can find it on Mark Gunn's Irish and Celtic music podcast at CelticMusicPodcast.com. And on another note, in about 10, 12 episodes time, something like that, we should be reaching the end of the Irish mythological cycle. These are the tales of the very earliest times. And in Irish mythology, they're followed by the tales of Cúhulín, the Ulster cycle, then the Fenian cycle with Finn McCall, and then there are some later tales about historical characters. What we were wondering was that after the mythological cycle, whether you wanted us to take a break and cover some other areas of Celtic mythology or carry on with the Irish, um, we'd then deal with some of the Cahoolin stories. Um, if we go to Welsh, for example, we'd be talking about the stories from the Mabinogion, the Bar Taliesin, uh, Gwydion, Pwyth, the son of Pryderi, and uh, the Hounds of Anu and all those sort of stories, or we could maybe go and deal with some of the Arthurian legends, uh, Gwain and the Green Knight, um, and things like that. Or maybe we could deal with some folklore, some Scottish tales from the Isle of Man. It's really kind of up to you, so give us some feedback and let us know where you'd like us to see, where you'd like to see us go when we've finished the Irish mythological cycle. To help collect people's opinions together we've put a little poll on the website which you can go and have a and please i do encourage you to pop along there and click on a button have a vote it's really all you've got to do but by the time we've gone through that dozen or so episodes we'll have a fairly good survey of exactly how you feel about the show and its direction and that's the direction we'll go well, that wraps up this episode, and until next time, Slon Gavoya. You've been listening to the Celtic Myth Pod Show, available from CelticMythPodShow.com. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and we'll stay tuned for the next episode. You can send us a quick email or voice feedback by emailing either Gary, that's G A R Y, or Ruth, R-U-T-H, at CelticMythPodShow.com. You can chat to us in the forums on our website. The show notes for this episode can also be found on the website. We'd like to say a special thank you to Kulan's Hound, who provided us with a the theme music for our show. You heard Hag Hole at the beginning and are listening to The Skylark now. 
You can find out more about this foot stomping band at www.sfhounds.com. And thanks again to Diane Arkinstone and Kim Robertson, whose music has been used for some of the incidental music in this podcast. You'll find links to their websites in our show notes. <laughs>